40% of Canada's trade goes over the ambassador bridge that they have blocked. What about the working people, the hardworking people who've gone to work every day during this pandemic and now can't get to work or, or can't work because there's no parts in their, in their factory to work with? Tommy Lahren and Geraldo got involved in a heated debate about the so-called Freedom Convoy, which includes Canadian truckers demonstrating against vaccination mandates and other measures meant to protect people from coronavirus. Which means I think it might be time for a cat fight. <laughs> Now, what was fascinating about this exchange, well, there are many fascinating things. Uh, number one, you have Geraldo on this streak of saying reasonable things on Fox News. I'm curious when they're gonna let him go because they don't really play with that. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But more importantly, Tommy Lahren has adopted a trend that we're seeing in the right wing where they co-opt populist pro worker language and apply it to their own causes. When in reality, they're usually not there for workers when they're striking for better working conditions or for better pay. So without further ado, let's hear what Tommy Lahren had to say in support of these demonstrations in Canada. I think we're starting to see those actually essential workers stand up for their rights and their freedoms. And these are people that are the forgotten Canadians and also here in the United States, the forgotten Americans that normally just sit down, shut up and do their job. Well, that is until for two years you infringe on their ability to do their job. You infringe on their medical rights and their health freedom. Then they're going to stand up. You've poked the bear, you've poked the beast and that beast is awake now. And people are going to listen. Governments are going to have to listen because these are the actual essential workers that can shut down Canada can shut down the USA too. a new kind of shutdown that the elites will not be able to ignore. Listen, the demonization of the working class, the blue collar folks that keep Canada and keep the United States and keep the world running has to end. And this is part of the frustration. Yeah, I found that to be an interesting statement. What does actual essential workers mean. So when it comes to our frontline healthcare workers and nurses, the very individuals who have not gotten a single break during this pandemic, asking people, please get vaccinated, please, our hospitals are overwhelmed during every COVID surge due to unvaccinated patients, please get vaccinated. Do those essential workers matter at all? Because she keeps saying actual essential workers and a common misconception that I keep seeing play out both in corporate media and among the right wing is that the demonstrators are blue collared working class, working class Canadians. Well, um, no, it turns out that a lot of them are actually the owners of the trucking companies. I'll give you one statement from Harold Yonker, who's a trucking company owner. He said this to BBC. We want to be free, we want to have our choice again, and we want hope, and the government has taken that away. David Dole from the Rational National was on the show yesterday, and he was talking about how this is mostly organized by the right wing, funded by the right wing, and the individuals who are taking part in this are in fact the owners of these trucking companies, and others have now joined in. But the people who have joined in are very much against regulations pertaining to COVID. Yeah, so look, people are complicated and this story is complicated, both for Geraldo and the story overall. So in terms of the convoy, there's parts of it that I love. And I don't know if that surprised you, but it shouldn't. Because it's direct action and it hits people where it matters in economic interests. And and that's why it's gotten so much attention. Because once you affect the dollars and cents, it moves people, right? And of course, the part I don't like is that it's on the most absurd useless cause, right? I want the right to make other people sick. That's the thing you got organized for? Jesus Christ, imagine if we did a convoy for higher wages, for truckers. That would get a lot of people's attention. right? And then maybe we could have a conversation about that and that would actually help all truckers. Right. I mean, there's been so many strikes and there's been a lot of labor militancy lately in the United States. And I haven't seen a lot of support from Tommy Lahren or anyone else on the right. And look, Jake, to your point, whether we agree with the cause or not, I support protesting. So I'm not against the notion of these individuals going out there demonstrating and making their voices be heard. But it's the way in which they're carrying it out. The fact that they're going out of their way to harass people living in Ottawa who still want to wear masks, 
right? They want to protest in order to protect their freedom, but they don't in any way value or respect the freedom of other individuals who feel more comfortable wearing masks. Like, what is the issue here? And look, I think that Geraldo actually did a pretty decent job in debunking much of what Tommy Lahren had to say there. So why don't we hear his side of the story? Well, I think, first of all, that Tommy is way too kind to the freedom convoy, so called. One man's freedom is another man's oppression. Their behavior has been nothing short of thuggish. In Ottawa, they've kept people in the neighborhood awake all night, revving their engines, blowing their horns. They've deprived Ottawa of businesses of tens of millions of dollars. Now they're blockading the international bridges. They are laying off people, cutting their shifts short in automotive assembly plants because they can't get the parts from Canada to the United States. They are, they used their crowbars to threaten cops who were gonna tow their trucks away that were blocking. They They've told truck, uh, tow truck drivers that they'll remember them when this is all over, uh, a clear intimidation tactic. Uh, these, uh, uh, to give them the mantle of freedom fighters is absolutely appallingly naive. Listen, the demonization of the working class, the blue collar folks that keep Canada and keep the United States and keep the world running has to end. And this is part of the frustration. I just, like the adoption of rhetoric that's meant to value workers and protect workers it like it really frustrates me because again like where was Tommy Lahren when John Deere workers were striking there's a concrete worker strike taking place in Seattle right now it's been taking place for nearly 3 months no attention on that 100%. at all 0% they're not in any way economic populists okay they will they, i mean they think people who strike or bums usually. You know? Yeah, no, no, Anna, that's such a great point, especially about the construction workers, let alone so many other strikes that have happened uh, that they derided. Okay, so uh, in in reality, so the, look, it, there is one thing here that I'm happy about, uh, which is that the right wing is beginning economic protests, whether they mean to or not, whether it's on an issue that makes sense or not. And the reason why that's a good trend is because when the left wing does it, the media just ignores it. They think the left wing is totally irrelevant and to be hated and dis and treated with disdain. So the left wing does a, a, a teacher strike, a construction strike, uh, any strike at all. And they're like, no, nah, nah, not gonna cover it, nah, don't care. Oh, You're doing protests and pipelines, won't cover it for months, right? Uh, the right wing does a protest, they have to take it seriously. Because they've been kissing right wing ass for decades. They don't know how to not kiss right wing ass, so they're like, <gasps> The right wing is doing, this must be serious and important. Let's give you both sides. Well, okay, good. Now, we, on the other hand, are principled. Blocking roads, I think it's perfectly acceptable. Is it a giant pain in the ass? Yes, it is. But that's what a protest is supposed to do. It's supposed to make you uncomfortable, draw attention, so you go, hey, let's focus here. Harassing people, not acceptable. So the stories coming out of Ottawa, where they're trying to rip people's masks off. There's a fire that was lit in a apartment building that was complaining about the noise at night, etc. That's typical right wing lunacy and totally unacceptable. Yeah. And remember, I don't agree with their stance at all. But we're gonna protest too and we also protest on things that matter, wages, healthcare, protecting your community and sometimes we block roads. And we're considered, and when we do that, of course, the entirety of the media, 200% of the media says, how dare they? This is criminal and unacceptable. And Geraldo is also complicated because he's going with the pro business line here. They're disrupting the beloved business you know, avenues for distribution, etc. On the other hand, I've hated some of what Geraldo says in the past. But on the harassment stuff here, he's absolutely right. And he has been right on a couple of issues. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Hey guys, and I'm saying this to both left wing and right wing. Maybe we don't cancel everyone because you never know. He might be terrible on one issue and then have a really interesting and important take that he brings to a conservative audience on Fox News. So I just want to respond to how corporate media doesn't cover certain protests while it loves to cover others. So they're all over this trucker thing. They've been covering it from the very beginning. But this isn't a labor protest, right? The corporate media doesn't pick between right or left. They pick between labor or 
circus, right? And this trucker protest has become a circus and they love it and they're focused on that. Look, the John Deere workers were not left wingers. Let's keep it real. Yeah, that's a great point, but it was an economic protest. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Against big business. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And like, big media will always support big business. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, all right, with that said, though, I want to fill in some more details um, in regard to what Geraldo was saying there. First off, uh, it's absolutely true that there are people in that community in Ottawa who have been harassed by some of these demonstrators. Let me give you a few examples. Uh, one person said, I just don't feel feel safe to be here. This is Justin Romanoff, who travels downtown every day to work as a food delivery driver. I do not feel safe in downtown Ottawa right now because I have a feeling if people will learn that I'm a refugee and a gay, I'm afraid of some trouble there. I'm, so, I'm afraid of some trouble there. And to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed that this protest is still happening across Canada. And he has good reason to be worried because you should take a look at one of the main organizers for this demonstration. This is the gentleman I'm talking about. Let's take a look at Patrick King. Trudeau, someone's gonna make you catch a bullet one day. To the rest of this government, someone's gonna do you in. You might wanna change your, uh, your name to Ishmael. Or drop a bunch of chains down the stairs and call yourself Chong Ching Ching Chang. <laughs> now you want to say, oh, the Indians culture and everything. The natives culture is a disgrace. It is 100%. That's right, Al. I've seen the mosque up in Fort Mac. Ladies and gentlemen, we are being overrun. The Anglo-Saxon people of Canada are our God-given culture. The Anglo-Saxon and the Francophones. We are losing our culture to other ethnic religions. So when one of your main organizers has that kind of ideology, it's going to look, fish rots from the head down. It's gonna trickle into the demonstration itself. One woman, a nursing student living in downtown Ottawa who requested anonymity over fears for her safety told NBC that she had been accosted multiple times for wearing a mask by people appearing to belong to the Freedom Convoy. They're targeting anyone who's wearing a mask, anyone who's respecting public health policy policy. I myself have been accosted at least three times. I had one man try to rip my mask off. I've been screamed at. I've been told to go back to my country, she said, after someone heard her speak with an accent. Yeah, right wing classy as always. So by the way, why is this kind of mania spreading in Canada? Canada is historically much more progressive than America. And that's why the right wing in this country oftentimes hilariously blame Canada for anything that goes wrong. And it's, it's there's a whole song in South Park over it because it's so absurd and fairly consistent that Republicans do in attacking the progressives in Canada, right? So now we've got the lunacy taking hold there. Now, is it because there's never any right wingers and all of a sudden there are? No, of course there's right wingers in Canada. There have always been. There's been areas, regions of Canada that are more right wing than others, some of the oil producing areas, etc., right? But now they are, have developed the same strain of madness as in America. And my theory on why that is, is because in the past, all they got was traditional media, television, radio, and newspapers. And Canada regulates that much more strictly than America does. So the Canadians wouldn't even get Fox News because the Canadian government said that's propaganda, it's, it's not true, so we're not gonna give it to you as news, right? And so they, hence, they weren't, their minds weren't poisoned with corporate propaganda and they were more progressive. Now, because of the internet, they're also going online and going, "Oh, I heard that ivermectin and the mass and the nonsense and blah 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 and QAnon." So now, great, our right wing media has begun to poison the right wing in Canada and turn them from right wing into lunatics. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.